Tom Downey here for the Cowboys Report. Today's show, we're looking at some of the top UFL players the Cowboys could look to pursue and sign. Dallas has multiple open roster spots. So they can sign several guys if they so choose. And Dallas has had success previously. Brandon Aubrey, Kevontae Turpin in back-to-back -back years, contributing in significant factors and roles, although it was, you know, special teams dominant, which is fine for what you're expecting out of these players. Now, we won't go too far in depth on these four guys. Gary on Conley, DeAndre Baker, Noah Dawkins, and Willie Harvey all worked out for the Cowboys earlier this week. Players are not eligible to sign from the UFL until after the championship game wraps up on Sunday. So stay tuned. We will maybe get some news on those guys and maybe others as well. And if and when that happens, we'll have a video for you guys. How can we not? We haven't got anything. We got two players signed, not including Damian Wilson this season. That was like a practice squad re-signing, basically. So if and when the Cowboys make a signing, we will have you guys covered. Hit that sub button, youtube.com slash at Cowboys TV. The area that I would most be exploring, and I am like a little bit worried of like, hey, why haven't you done any of this with workouts, is the defensive tackle room. Oso de Izua, good three technique. Mozzie Smith, who knows? Justin Rogers, seventh round pick. Carl Davis is who he is. I don't mean that in a positive way, by the way. Chauncey Golson is a uh, junior broker, kind of flex DT's defensive ends. Neelan can help you there. It's a bad defensive tackle room, and God forbid Oso Digizua goes down. It's real bad. So some UFL targets beginning with the defensive tackle room. And there's a couple guys on this list I have to asterisk. It's Jalen Redmond. He had been banged up a bit this year. And in, in a very small four-game sample size before he hurt his ankle, he was dominant. Five TFLs in those four games, four and a half sacks, despite me uh, being unable to find an Arlington Renegades photo for Jalen Redmond, so it's Oklahoma one. I had a fifth-round grade on coming out of, of Oklahoma. Uh, there were major medical red flags, which you got to vet. You got to figure out. Um, and the ankle injury does not encourage things from that perspective, but he was productive in a pretty noteworthy way in a small sample size. We'll stick with the defensive tack room here. It's Carlos Davis of the Birmingham Stallions. I am curious to see if he gets another chance. He's had chances. He's got a twin brother, Khalil. I think it's a twin in the NFL, too. Now, of note for Carlos Davis, uh, the, uh, the consistency or the efficiency is out of whack. Four TFL, seven sacks. Wow, seven sacks. That's really freaking good. Yes, pressure rate was under 9% means he was probably a little bit too consistent uh, in terms of generating pressures to sacks, and that's probably going to drop off a little bit later on. Or at least moving forward, I should say. So will the Cowboys sign a UFL player? Y for yes, N for no at the pin comment of today's show. A name you might remember is Daniel Wise. And again, now he also got hurt. And I don't know what the injury was, but he only played six games this past season for the Michigan Panthers. Only three TFLs, second half. Really good pressure rate, though. 13.7%. You go, wait a minute, Tom. Daniel Wise. Why do I recognize that name? You recognize the name because he's a Cowboys legend. He played for the Cowboys all those years ago. He was out there... Um, UDFA out of Kansas, so I actually liked him a lot coming out of Kansas. I had a higher grade on him than most. Cardinals, Commanders, Chiefs was a practice squatter for a little bit in Dallas before the Cardinals poached him. That seems significant to me in terms of the, the role that he played. The Cowboys know him. In fact, he is not the only one that is a former Cowboy football player who has played pretty well in the UFL. Walter Palmore was one of the best run stoppers this year also for the Panthers. He was on Dallas in 2020. Austin Falou was a battle hawk. He was there in 2021. Josiah Bronson was there. It was here for two years. And that's part of the issue you run into here. You're at a lower level in the NFL. The Cowboys have seen these guys before. Eh, they did a good job in the UFL. They weren't good enough to play for Dallas originally. Maybe they've gotten better. But the Cowboys knowing them 
might not end up being a positive thing because the Cowboys already said, you weren't good enough. So with this in mind, there were, by the way, as we're going through the rosters and the talent and the grades, there were a lot of, a lot of Cowboys legends in there. So let's have some fun. We're not done with that, by the way, including a one that uh, is, mm, we'll talk about him in a minute. Name a Cowboys legend for me in the comments section. The, the one running back I've got interest in, and there are a couple guys that might be able to contribute on special teams, but that's kind of the, the Turpin role, is Jacob Sailors with the Battle Hawks this year. Averaged just over 10 yard or 10 carries per game, but he led the, the UFL in running back rushing yards. Uh, Adrian Martinez, who also got benched in the, in the championship game for Matt Corral. There's a name for you. Uh, and they're going to go back to Martinez. He actually led the NFL in, or the UFL in yards on the ground. So there was was really good. And uh, look, the, the running back room is not good in Dallas. I would, if I'm being honest, I'd probably put Sailors behind Malik Davis on, on the, the depth chart. Like I, think he, I think we have to have proper expectations involved here. But, hey, you don't have a lot of great players. Like, is he better than Nathaniel Pete and Snoop Connor? Maybe. Possible. A lot of these guys, I think, should get a chance at least to go play in the NFL, sometimes play in the NFL again. I think Hakeem Butler absolutely fits that category. Butler has been kind of a weird football player, right? Like he's big, he's tall, he's super athletic. He got moved to tight end at one point, and then he's back at receiver in the UFL for the Battle Hawks, and he put up great production. And I think for a couple of the guys on this list, they just might end up topping out as like as an analogy. Man, that's the best FCS player, you know. Like they're just they're not their their role doesn't overlap enough in the NFL, but if you let them be the one at a smaller competition, they re they really impress. They're just not quite good enough to be the one elsewhere. The receiving room, I don't mind adding some some impact here. And Butler's way bigger than what that they have now. Carolina's showing interest in in Akeem Butler. He might choose to sign there, thinking it's his best chance to, to earn a role. But I'd pick up the phone and say, hey, you want to come work out for us? See if you can splash or flash with your size. I do in general when it comes to like this type of level of move and you know not spending big money in agency, unfortunately. I do tend to trust the Cowboys front office a little bit more. How do you, how much do you trust? How much confidence level overall in the Cowboys front office? Scale it for me from 1 to 10 in the comments. I do want to mention defensive end. You could see Tyrus Sweet and Byron Vaughn's getting like some Sam linebacker run. And then you're down to Micah and Tank Lawrence, Sam Williams, Marshawn Nealon, Junior Fehoko, and Chauncey Golston could be DTs. You, you, you could look for some depth here. I wish Isaiah Land was still here. First up is Chris Odom. Now, Odom got a chance a couple years ago with the Browns. He had an awesome 2022 campaign uh, back for the USFL, I believe it was, and not the XFL. He, he was the defensive player of the year. Goes to Cleveland, tears his ACL. Sits out 2023, came back this year, was still pretty good. Not as dominant, but eight TFLs, five sacks, ten and a half pressures. He'll probably get a workout or two. Sticking with our theme of Cowboys legends, that's Breland Speaks, baby. And Breland Speaks was the UFL Defensive Player of the Year this past season. 32 tackles, 13 TFLs, nine and a half sacks, 12.4 pressure rate. That's pretty solid there. He's played for the Cowboys. In fact, the former second-round pick had multiple different Cowboys stints, 2020 and 2021, but he was just a practice squatter for him. Again, that's kind of the, the issues you run into here. Some more Xs. Uh, again, Taco Charlton is one of the best UFL players. He had six sacks this year. I'm not bringing back Taco Charlton. I want to mention him. Rondell Carter had four and a half sacks uh, for the Michigan Panthers. Mika Tafu, you guys remember him? That's a, that's a deep cut. That's a deep, deep cut. He was there for like a month and a half or something. Uh, he had a, a half sack. He's not going to sign. And I'll include Kenny Willekes on here because he is a Mike Zimmer ex. He spent multiple years under Zimmer in Minnesota as a draft pick, I believe a seventh round pick, out of Michigan State. He had five TFLs and four sacks this past season. So name a UFL player that you want to sign if you know of any. Head down to the comments. Let me know. Cowboys have obviously an interest linebacker, Willie Harvey, Noah Dawkins. A couple other linebackers I think you can mention here. First up is Devontae Beckett, the San Antonio Brahma's linebacker. He was the other all-UFL linebacker 
uh, alongside uh, Willie Harvey Jr. Nine TFLs, 72 tackles, one and a half sacks, a PBU. Nothing overly shocking, but pretty st- did, did force two fumbles, though, uh, in 10 games played. Was near the top of the tackle leaders in the UFL. Mike Rose, who got a chance to play with the Dolphins last year after being a UDFA out of Iowa State with the Chiefs. Uh, 45 tackles, two TFLs, two interceptions, by the way. Coverage stuff matters. Three PBUs. He was a battle hawk as well. And then another Cowboys legend, Story Jackson. And I put him on here for one reason, not because he had 41 tackles or three TFLs or he's from Arlington, which I think Mike Rose is from the area too. Or maybe it was Beckett. One of those two guys was. Uh, And he plays for the Renegades. He led the UFL in special teams tackles. He had 16. If, If I'm the Cowboys, the spot that's open at linebacker is linebacker five. Linebacker five is going to be a core special teamer. So if I were John Fossil, that would interest me. Plus, you know him, which, again, maybe is a positive or a negative thing, from the last time he was with the Cowboys back in the 2022 preseason. 